All right, let's get to the Friday feedback segment, also known as the Friday feed bag. I don't know why. I think I just once misspoke or something like that. Uh, emails to info at davidpackman.com will be considered. We'll also sometimes feature subreddit posts or YouTube comments, TikTok replies. Uh, anything could end up on Friday feedback. And we start today with a subreddit post from uh, subreddit user 4320lim who said, I saw Trump supporters in Massachusetts today. I live in Massachusetts and I was pretty shocked to see Trump voters standing on the bridge over the highway today, hanging up banners that say things like Trump won in 2020. It's shocking enough that anyone believes that. But even in blue Massachusetts, there are people like that. I guess they're scared he's going to get convicted in Manhattan. Can't wait for it to happen. Then the question comes, will he get jail time? My understanding is most legal commentators think it's not the case, but possible. Anyone else seeing the Trumpers out to support their favorite criminal defendant this weekend? You know, this this relates to something that I've said before. Even in blue states, there's lots of Republicans and even in red states, there's lots of Democrats. Massachusetts has a population of about seven million people. Last presidential election, 32 percent of the electorate voted for Trump. Now, obviously, in the seven million, there are kids and there are non voters. So th this isn't perfect math, but even in Massachusetts, you probably still have a million Trump supporters, a million Trump supporters in blue liberal left wing Massachusetts. So first of all, we have to remember that even the bluest states still have many Trump supporters. We have a country of 330 million people, 340 million people. But also when Trump says, I can't get a fair trial in Manhattan because there's so many Democrats, you need 12 jurors and six alternates. And the idea that a venue change is necessary merely because in Manhattan, people tend to vote for Democratic presidential candidates very much not based, not based in reality. Also from the subreddit, Web Brewers says, why hasn't David mentioned that the Fed not lowering interest rates is a sure sign of a good economy? For that matter, I haven't seen any pundits make this obvious point. Even my limited economic knowledge tells me the Fed uses interest rates to accelerate or slow economic growth. When things are good, they're not going to lower rates. Yeah, this it's a fair point, but it's a bit abstracted from some of the arguments on the ground. And what I mean by that is even though the Trumpies will deny any argument you make that the economy is doing pretty well, saying to them unemployment's low, inflation is down, GDP's up, stock market doing well, even though they will deny it and say, no, you're wrong or whatever. It's clearer than saying if the Fed believed the economy was declining, they would start cutting in order to try to push it up. You're absolutely correct. It's not an argument that's going to land with a lot of the people who don't even want to acknowledge the unemployment numbers, if what I'm saying is clear. So I think that this is absolutely right. If indeed the Fed was starting to see a need to help the economy because of slowing metrics, they would start lowering interest rates in most cases, assuming there are not some other extenuating circumstances. So it's a it's a fair point, And I think we'll um, we'll we'll keep talking about it. Uh, Tony Powder said on YouTube, nobody likes Trump, but I have to admit, admit his economy was better. It has me seriously considering voting for him this election. I don't know if this person's lying or ignorant. Now, some people love to say stuff like this and they're just lying to, to get a rise out of people. But I would very specifically respond by saying, tell me which metrics were better under Trump. Job creations better under Biden. GDP numbers look good. Unemployment's never been this low for this long a period of time, uh, dating back 50, 60, 70 years. I mean, just tell me which data were better and then we can talk about it. But uh, the economy was I have to admit the economy was better. You would think that if it were so obvious to you that the Trump economy was better, you would have at least some metrics to cite and then we could talk about them. Slim Shady says, is it just me? But every time David tells a lie, he blinks rapidly twice. I think I just did it. It's his tell. Anybody out there notice that? David, you're welcome to sit in on our weekend poker games anytime. I'm not really going to address this directly because it's so dumb. But I've told the story before. There are a couple really sad examples of uh, mental illness that we saw head on 
when a couple different viewers over the years came to believe that I was communicating with them specifically by blinking Morse code messages just to them. Like, in other words, I might be talking about GDP, but I'd be blinking in Morse code a message about something else, like a warning to them or something like that. It's really, really, really sad that uh, there is that type of untreated mental illness uh, in the country. And uh, it would be great if we could increase resources and do more for uh, for folks. But uh, I blink when I blink twice when I tell lies is not one that I was expecting to hear. OK, back to the subreddit. Tired of rat racing made a list of the best brain locking policy paradoxes that MAGA people can't figure out and pointed out that Jordan Klepper does a really good job of pointing out the inconsistencies and gives some examples. For example, they want Trump to be president, but they insist he was actually president the last four years. Thus, he would be ineligible after being president from what from their perspective is eight years. Sure. They say the last four years, everything has been terrible, but they insist Trump was in charge the last four years. They say covid wasn't real or dangerous, but the vaccine was made and pushed out as an emergency order during the Trump presidency. The pro-lifers are also usually Second Amendment nuts and are apparently OK with allowing for more school shootings. The uber conservatives want government to not interfere with their gun sales, sales or daily life, yet find it acceptable for the government to meddle in people's reproductive rights. Please share any other gotcha gems. Here's the thing about these gotcha gems, and they are all accurate expositions of hypocrisy and double standards from right wingers. The problem with every single one of these is that double standards no longer matter. These might be effective at something if the people who perpetuate these double standards cared about consistency. They don't care about consistency anymore. And a lot of that is why pointing out double standards alone really doesn't do anything at all, anything at all. Let's go now over to Facebook where Tammy says nothing. And I mean nothing you tell me in connection with Donald J. Trump will surprise or shock me. On top of that, I do not believe he will spend a split second behind bars, even though a large number of individuals have done so for him. And a, and a number have sung like songbirds pleaded guilty of doing things Trump's asked them to do and have lost their bar licenses, career, family, self-respect. All things Trump touches dies. The MAGAs is a cult. There's some shaky grammar here, but I get the point. Full stop. The Republican Party no longer exists. It is now the party of Trump. He has already been fitted for his crown as their king. The Republican Party itself is eating their own. They are self-destructive because no one would stand up against Trump. Go figure. What I'll say, Tammy, is the following. I hope you are correct that they are self-destructing because the alternative is that Trump wins four more years in November. And then we have a real problem on our hands, a real problem on our hands. Jemth says on YouTube, hmm, any Jew voting for Biden needs to be talked to. Somehow that sounds a little tamer to me than anyone who votes for Trump needs to be deprogrammed. Actually, I've wondered why any Jew would support the Democratic Party when the Republicans, including Trump, has demonstrated significantly greater support for Jews in Israel. It's a mystery I will never understand. Well, what you 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 don't understand reality, sir or ma'am. The reality is that Trump and Republicans are, quote, supportive of Jews and Israel in ways that are primarily self-serving insofar as evangelical Christians believe that support of Israel will bring about the second coming of Christ, at which all or most of the Jews die and the rapture and all this stuff. They don't care about actually being in a situation where you're improving the lives of those living in Israel uh, and in the Palestinian territories. They care about it in a self-serving way. And in addition to that, the sort of support that is coming from the Democratic Party, I find to be much more balanced which is, of course, we have to do something about growing anti-Semitism in a real and substantive way. And of course, we want to maintain relationships with democratic countries in the Middle East, many of which are few and far between. 
And also we need to put some sort of brakes on what would otherwise be a completely unrestricted campaign of who the hell knows what from Benjamin Netanyahu in Israel. So th for for me and for the vast majority of American Jews who are liberal and uh, left leaning, we see the Democratic Party as far more supportive of our values and of American Jews and of a vision of the Middle East that is much more in line with our values as well. Now, are there ex outrageous anti Israeli, anti Semitic, far, far, far left extremists? Of course, and I disagree with them. So I, I this is this one is based in a lot of ignorance, a lot, a lot of ignorance. Uh, Bob wrote in about my recent commentary about Jesus's tomb being found empty and is very upset. Bob says, David, I am a supporter of your show, liberal and a Christian. Just stop it. I respect your right to be an atheist. So respect the faith of your Christian supporters. Why do you pick on the Christians, but don't go after the Jews or Muslims? Don't they believe in the same God? This was so insulting. I'm thinking about canceling my subscription over this. And a couple of people did. Listen, um, if your faith is such that me saying, hey, I don't know how much non biblical evidence there is for Jesus coming back to life. If you see that as picking on Christians, then we just have a fundamental disagreement about it, what, what it means to not have any sacred cows and be able to critically analyze anything. Now, I don't go after Jews or Muslims. Uh, no, the Noah's Ark story is from the Old Testament. We've, quote, gone after it in the sense that we've examined the scientific implausibility of it. When it comes to Islam, many times we have gone after beliefs from Islam that I believe are completely not based in fact. Uh, there's nothing special about any one religion. There's nothing special about religion or non religion over the other. This is a show where we will discuss any number of things. And if it's considered insulting to say, Hey, for me, the evidence for the resur resurrection of Jesus is shaky. If you don't include so-called sacred texts, if that's an insult, if that's an attack on religion. Uh, we just have a fundamental disagreement of uh, what is worthy of discussion at the end of the day. And some people have canceled. That's right. They have canceled. Uh, speaking of canceling, make sure to get a membership at joinpacman.com. We estimate one half of one percent of our audience supports us directly in this way. If we could go from half of one percent to one percent, we become financially sustainable indefinitely, no matter what YouTube does, no matter what Facebook does to our monetization, no matter what anybody does. So consider getting yourself a membership at joinpacman.com. The new website is working beautifully, and I hope to see you on today's bonus show.